Okay, Dalit on the or B. Uh, it's a little bit of a complicated Gemara today. Oh, really? Yeah, this this Gemara is, is legendary. It's Legend. two two large discussions. Tachas and Tzini Shalom Kesef, and the Kulo Kishadus Bar Benayil. Kulo Kishadus Bar Benayil is a massive Rashi. Um, okay, we'll get, to, we'll, we'll get to it. Let's let's go for it. Okay, so continuing yesterday, we spoke about Rav Hoshia. Rav Hoshia had. I believe it was 13 of us, 13 of us in Zikin. And they were really grouped in three categories. There was the four of our Mishnah. That's one category. The five of, of Chayvel. Chayvel, again, where you have to remember, Chayvel is basically an English assault or battery. Chayvel is one person hurting another person. Chayvel makes five separate payments. Four in addition to Nezik. Nezik is regular damages. That's the decrease in value. He also pays uh, a tsar pain. We spoke about that yesterday, how you evaluate that. Repo the doctor bills, Sheves, the amount that he couldn't work because he was holed up in a hospital or something. And but just the embarrassment. That's the second category. Again, Arva Avis and Zikim of our Mishnah, Sharbar Mava Hever, five of Chayvel, Nezitzah, Repo, Sheves, and Boishas. And there are four Shimrim. Uh, four types of watchmen. Like we said, there was a uh, an unpaid watchman, a paid watchman, a renter, and a borrower. As we said, a unpaid watchman has the least responsibility. Basically, unless he's sort of careless and reckless, he's not liable. Minor like negligence is not sufficient to, to, to give him liability. Um, on the other hand, you have Shail. Shail is the most strict. Shail sort of is, he has as much responsibility as the original owner, except for one unique exception. Which we're not going to discuss now because there's no need to. We'll discuss it when we get to Bafur Mitzia. That's the discussion with Bafur Mitzia. But in general, generally speaking, just like if the if there's a freak accident, the owner obviously takes a loss. So if you own something and it gets into a freak a freak accident, then you take a loss. It's gone. Nobody's going to cover that loss. Similarly, a shayel is going to take the same level of responsibility. In between, it was a noise socher or a socher. That would be a paid watchman or a renter. Where they're responsible, basically, if they're not, if they are negligent, if they're responsible, if they're not negligent at all, what we call Ainitz, then they are exempt. Now we get to 24 of us as Ikin. We are about 10 lines from the bottom of the page, Dalad Amabes, for me. Okay. Tony of Chia, Estrin for Arab of us Ikin. So we already have, what is it? Is it five plus four plus four? I'm sorry, Rabbi, you said one three B. 4B, 4B, about 10 lines in the bottom. So, so far we have the 13 of Rabbi is 5 plus 4 plus 4. 5 of Chayvel, 4 in the Mishnah, 4 Shimon, 4 Watchmen, 4 in the Mishnah, that would be Ad, Shar, Bur, Mava, and Hever. Now we get to Rabbi Tan Rabbi Chia, Esen, Bar, Arba, Ovis, Nizikin. There are 24 types. Now over here in Nizikin, Nizikin literally means damages, but over here in Nizikin is used in the loosest possible sense. Damage sort of means that you have a net loss. It doesn't mean that you, somebody actually damaged some, somebody else in the in the typical sense. And we'll see what's included. Okay, if anyone wants to count, you can keep counting. Okay, what are they? Tashlume kefal. This is if a if you have a robber who steals. Now, in this case, it's very, in English, I don't know if there's two different words for this. In Hebrew, there's a word called ganev and a word called gazlan. What's the difference between a ganev and a gazlan? A ganev steals by night. A gazlan steals by day. Alternatively, a ganev might be armed. What we call list of is a ganev. The armed robber is considered a ganev. A ganev, someone who sleeps, who steals by night, or or he steals with with uh, you know armed, an armed robber. So we say this guy has no. He's he's afraid of. He's not afraid of people, but he's af, he's not afraid of God, but he's afraid of people. So Torah gives him a penalty. He has to pay twice what he took. Whatever he took, he has to double it. A guy who's neither afraid of God nor afraid of people, so then we just require him to return. Uh, I guess, I guess that's that's as you say, he's truly a lost cause, and he only pays he only pays the value of what he stole. So Tashlume Kefal is one example. Tashlume Arbab Hamisha. The guy steals either an ox or a sheep, and then he slaughters it or sells it. He pays four four sheep or five ox. Ganev, a, rob, a robber at nighttime or an armed robber. Goslin, this is a daytime robber who's unarmed. 
the Adam Zeit, you know, the type that they have in uh, in England uh, in America, it's it's rare to hear a Gosling story. Most of the time, well, in Portland they have it. Portland they have uh, in crazies and on the homeless on the street that uh, will sometimes be Gosling. They're unarmed by daytime. They'll just rob somebody. Um, okay, the Adam the Adam Zeitman, somebody who bears false witness without getting into too much detail on how it works, but roughly speaking, if you bear false witness and how you know you do bear false witness, it's a whole separate discussion. But generally speaking, the penalty is whatever you try to do happens back to you. So if you try to, to make the guy pay you know hundred dollars for damages, the witnesses themselves pay a hundred dollars. Okay, the anus. This is a scenario of rape, limited. Okay, so in the story of rape, just go through this very briefly, or I'll just go through the category. Anus is rape, mifata seduction, mitzi shemra, is a false claim that your newly that a person's newly married bride was adulterous during the period of kedushin of erosin. Um, in a nutshell, anus and mifata have four payments to make. First of all, there's the payment of nezek. That's the decrease decrease in value of a woman because she's no longer a virgin. She's, so to speak, damaged goods. She was raped. You know, obviously, that's not a preferred candidate for marriage. Number two, um, uh, that, that would be called nezek. Um, one second. Uh, okay, one second. Uh, let just split that up. Nezek is the fact that she's not a virgin. Pigam is the fact that she's damaged because, I'm sorry, no, Pigam, no, Pigam, is, Pigam is the same thing. W one payment, Pigam, which is Nezek, okay. Um, and you also pay Boshis, embarrassment. Obviously, it's embarrassing for the family and for her. And you also pay a penalty. The penalty payment is a fixed amount. 50 coins for Aynas and Fata and 100 coins for Mertz Shamra. Aynas and Fata, the penalty payment is only made when the girl is between 12 and, sorry, when the girl is younger than 12 years and six months. In other words, prior to the completion of puberty, which is six months after the beginning of puberty. Okay. And Mertz Shamra, I believe, is um, the same thing. Mertz Shamra, I believe, is also the same age in order to make the penalty payment. Okay. Now we get to another, uh, another three, which are very interesting. So we, we know that there's, we, we speak about a person doing damage. We speak of two types of damages, right? A person could be chayvel or mazik. As we said before, chayvel is when you damage somebody else, per, somebody, another person. Mazik is when you damage things, stuff. Now within mazik, there's a unique category of mazik, which we discussed in, um, where would that be? That would be in, is in, is in Kedushan? I'm getting Yeah, um, it was in Gittin Daft, Gittin Daft and Bates. Uh We were talking about a Hezek Shein and Nicker. How is it, what, what does that mean? You have a damage that isn't visible. What did he do? He took Trumo and he mixed them into a pot of Kulin. This is Madama. So now you can't eat anything in the pot because maybe it's Trumo. But the pot doesn't look damaged. The guy takes wine and pours it for an idol. The wine doesn't look damaged. It's the same wine. But it's yeah now yeah and 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 uh, you can't use it. Let's say a guy takes some takes something that was tahar and makes a tummy. Same thing. There's no visual difference. So these three cat these three are in addition to all of what we learned for Hani Placer and the thirteen of Ravishia, Haasar Arba, that this is twenty-four. Okay. Obviously the question is why does Rav Aisha we, we so far establish why our Mishnah does not include those of Rav Aisha? Because our mission really does include everything. Our mission includes Adam and Mazik, potentially. Either our mission doesn't include Adam, that would be according to Shmuel, that says Mava is Shane. So the mission doesn't refer to human beings at all. Or if our mission doesn't include human beings, it includes all types of Hezek of human beings. Whether that Hezek is Shimerim, Shimerim, Watchman, or Negligent, or uh, or whether it's Chayvel, or any other type of Adam and Mazik. Okay. Why does Rav not include these? So Gemara says, Rav Aisha is talking about monetary payments, not penalty payments. That would be knas. So Gemara says, God of the Gazan of the who listen a robber or a or, or robber by daytime, a night or day robber, their principal payment is not a knas, it's not a penalty. They took 100, they give back 100. 
The Gemara says in a second, a robber, he already said a robber. Okay, so this is uh, an interesting thing. So we talk about a Shoy Let's see an unpaid watchman. An unpaid watchman claims the item was stolen. Actually, still in his house. What's the Torah says this person is considered a Ganav. A Shoy that lies is considered a Ganav. So he already includes a Ganav. By including Shoy he effectively includes a type of thief as well. No, Shomer, what's the other kind of Shomer? Shomer, Shomer is unpaid. Chinam means free. Shomer Sachar, Sachar means pay. So you can either be Chinam or Sachar. Chinam free or Sachar with pay. One second. Okay. Rebchia and Ami, Hatolay Shomachina, Vashoyal. So Rebchia also, why does Rebchia repeat himself by talking about a shomer that lied and talking about a, a robber? It's effectively, it's the same thing. So Moses says, no, 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 they're, they're similar, but they're not exactly the same. A shomer didn't take the money prohibitively, right? He was permitted to take the money when he took it, right? A shomer was given the money and then he stole it by lying about it. Whereas a a robber, his initial foray into the guy's house was criminal. Okay, so Mars says, Aiden Zemim de Mainahu listening. Okay. So this is a um take a take a minute here. Okay, we speak we, we speak we've spoken about so far in the past, knas and Mammon. These are another few key words to remember, not just for this Masechta, but for basically all of all of the Zikan. What is a knas? What's Mammon? A knas is a penalty payment. How do you define a penalty? A penalty of payment is either more than you damaged or it's a fixed amount. Obviously, that's a penalty. Why? First of all, if you're paying more than you damaged, obviously you're getting penalized. And moreover, if you're paying a fixed amount, well, nothing's fixed in this world. Everything's variable. The fact that you're paying a fixed amount clearly indicates you're paying a penalty. Mamain, on the other hand, is paying exactly what you damaged. So if you have a, a nighttime robber or an armed robber, that makes a double payment. The principal is mamon. The double payment, that's more than you more than you damaged. That's a knas, a penalty payment. Okay, very important to understand that a penalty payment has a rule called asher yarshion Elohim. Elohim over here does not mean God. It means the court. As oftentimes the word, the word Elohim refers to courts. In this case, only a court could require a penalty payment. Practically speaking, today, a court does not have the authority to impose a penalty payment. And therefore, if a person admits that he committed a crime that would otherwise require a penalty payment, he does not make penalty payments. So, for example, if a guy steals a nighttime robber and then he admits to his wrongdoing, he does not make the double payment. He only, he only pays the principal. The question is with regard regard to false witnesses, is that mammon or is that knas? If the witnesses themselves admit that they were lying, it's complicated when they would admit it, and they'd have to admit in a different court. Okay, whatever it is, but if they would admit that they were lying, then they would they would be exempt from making making their payment, according to one opinion. So Mar says, listen, so like Rabbi Kiva, the Amr Aim Asham al Piatsman. Rabbi Kiva says Adam, the payment of false witnesses, Adam Samim, is is uh, a knas, and therefore you don't pay upon your own admission. So Mar says, Isavar like Rabbi Kiva, listen, Trey Gavni Shar. If they held, if if the if uh, Rav Chia held like Rabbi Kiva, this is another problem. Rabbi Kiva differentiates between two types of oxen that that gourd. Listen, shard the azik shard, listen, shard the azik adam. A shard that gores another ox, an ox that gores an ox, or an ox that gores a person. That's not what we learned. Rabbi Kiva, I'm a af tam shechal ba adam shalom be meisim nezik shalom. According to Rabbi Kiva, a tam, a tam is sort of a tame animal, an animal that hasn't been known to gore. So an animal gores a human being. He pays the full payment. Not only that, he pays mealia. Aliyah is the actual value of the damages, even if they exceed the value of the damaging animal, of the goring animal, which is typically not the rule with regard to Tom. 
he calls a, ta- a, a, a an ox that an, a regular ox that's again not not known for for inflicting damage gores another ox he pays a half payment and he also pays begufai megufai no more than the value of the assaulting ox um okay so the Mara says so why doesn't he make the difference the Mara says atav or bekivel exizing Rebekiva broke the uh, broke the chain. Um, the Tanya we learned Rebekiva. I'm a yachal aftam shchav ba'adam yisham and aliyah tam leimer yalsa leim migufim yisham and yisham and aliyah. Reb Tarfim basically uh, reneged on that statement and he said that uh, no, you actually pay migufai. Okay, so that's that's not such a difficulty. Okay, now again, the principle of of Rav Chi of Rav Aisha was we're not talking about penalty payments. What about Ganav and Gazlan? Ganav and Gazlan, that's not a penalty. That is, that's principle, but that's included on according to Rav Aisha under the rubric of Shimer. A Shimer, a, a watchman that lies is effectively a Ganav or a Gazlan. What about Adim Zaymim? Adim Zaymim is a penalty. Okay, well, what about Aynes Mephata Maitse Shemra? Aynes rape, Mephata seduction. Or Maitishemra, Maitishemra is lying about somebody that um Maitishemra is lying about someone who uh lying about the bride you just married. Okay, over there, Dimimina who listening. Over there, there's a monetary payment, it should be included. Ravisha should include it. So the Mars is Manavshach. Okay. In other words, now in every in, in these three scenarios, rape, seduction, lie, lying about a bride that you just married, there is a penalty payment. That's true. And obviously a is not including penalty payments. But there also is a regular payment. There's a payment of Nezek, Tsar, and Baishas. Tsar obviously would only be in effect in a, in a scenario of rape. In seduction, she's not, there's obviously no payment of Tsar. Okay, so Mars is Manavshach. Hold on a second. Which de- which damage are you talking about? Inezek, if you're talking about Nezek, Tonalite. Nezek, he already said, Rabbi included Nezek in his list of Chayvel, right? Chayvel meaning a, a, a man who engages in battery against another person. He pays five, a uh, person engages in battery against another person. He, he pays five penalties. One of them is Nezek. So Tonalite, it's listed. Itzar, if you're talking about pain, Tonalite, it's also listed in the case of rape. It's listed at, in, on, under the rubric of Chayvel. One of the five categories of chayvul. E if it's embarrassment, tonalay. Embarrassment is also listed as chayvul. E if you're talking about her decrease in value as a as a potential suitor, potential marriage partner, a mate, hainu nezek. Pigam is nezek. It's included under the same thing. Mas Well, so what isn't included? Knasa, the penalty payment, the fifty or hundred coins. The Mara says, but knasa like a mayri, we're not referencing knas. We're not referencing penalty payments. Okay. Finally, the last last three items on, on Rav Chia's list. These seem to be monetary items, and, and Rav Aisha does not include them. What are they? Hamatama medamet menasach. This is what we call the hezek she'en and nikr. The damage that isn't visible. It's a spiritual damage. Dimimayna who listening, let it be included. Sigmar says monavshik. Hold on a sec. He has a she'en and nikr shmei hezek hatan nezek. So let's try to evaluate this. Is a damage that isn't visible, Hezek Shein and Nikar, is this type of damage actually considered damage or not? If it's actually considered damage, well, it's listed under damages. If it's not actually listed under damages, then what is it? It's a penalty. So, E Hezek Shein and Shmei Hezek, if it is damage, Hatanalai, it's listed. E Hezek Shein and Nikar, Loi Shmei Hezek, if it's not considered damage, then why do you have to pay? Havalai Knossa, it's a penalty payment. Uba Knossa, like a Mairi. And Rav Oishi is not talking about penalties. Sigmar says, "Let me get over Rav Chia Hezek Shenenik or Loishmei Hezek." Let's say, let's say from here that we have proof Rav Chia holds that Hezek Shenenik is not considered a damage. This is really a debate between Abaye and Rava. The Ishmei Hezek, because if it is a damage, then why is it included under its own category? Hotanale Nezek. It's included under regular damages. Why does he need need to put it as its own as its own three of its nezikin? Sigmar says, "Tani Hezek the Minkara, but Tani Hezek the Loi Minkara." He talks about the damage that's visible and the damage that isn't visible. Are we together? Oddly enough, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So far, so good. I'll just try to. Uh, yeah, we still have time. Okay.
Okay, so now we have the obvious question. Okay, so let, let, let's let's just review what we saw until now, and then we'll go on. We have four obvious and in the Mishnah. What are the four obvious and in the Mishnah, Eric? If Shor and X. Um, mm. Well, it depends by, by operation definitions. Um, you know, you got a you got a hole in the ground. There we go. Bar. That's a bar. There's a degree of responsibility, although he goes with that. Uh, I guess that's two. what you call uh, something that was not normally known to be a problem. So he is a problem. Then you got something that's guarded. Um, the culpability guarded for pay. Okay, okay. Uh, so, let's, so let's go solid. In the, in the mission, the first mission of the power, we have four categories. An axe, a pit, a fire, yeah, fire yeah. and then maybe there were, maybe it was two types of oxen. One type of ox that does casual damage, meaning doesn't obviously not two types of oxen. Okay, yeah, obviously intentional. And the other one is intentional pleasure, but pleasurable damage, not oh, intentional really? damage, oh. pleasurable damage. Okay, right. That'd be Shane and Rego. That's one version of the Mishnah. The reason for that is because in that version of the Mishnah, there is we're not referring to Tom. Mm -hmm. That would be Karen. We're not referring to Karen, and we're also not referring to people. The mission only talks about things that you own. That would be an ox, a pit, or a fire. Okay. That's according to Shmuel. According to Rav, there are four categories in the Mishnah. Like, like Shmuel, what are the four categories? There would be an there would be an ox, a pit, a human being, and a fire. Simple. Rav Aishas takes those four. He adds two more groups to the four. Four types of watchmen that didn't do their job. Right, whether it's a watch, if uh, an unpaid, a unpaid, paid renter or borrower, and five five categories of chayvul. Chayvul again is a man hurting another man, person hitting another person, and he pays five types of damages. Nets it's salary and vicious. Okay, then and okay, so again you add four of the mishnah, four shaymrim plus five of chayvul. What do you get? Thirteen. And Rav Aishia does 24. He has a whole bunch of more categories. Now, the mission obviously lists four. What does that exclude? It excludes the 13 of, of Rav Aishia. Rav Aishia says 13. That excludes the 24 of Rav Chia. Does that make sense? But what, what is Rav, Rav Chia says a 24 of ice. What does that mean? With what, what makes them of ice? What makes them fatherless? What, 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 and with what, in what way are they, these things in common? What what principle is Rav Chia using to try to bind all these things together? What's the common principle? You hear the question? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this basically takes us to the bottom of the Gemara. Okay, so let's continue. Bishlam Matanadidon, according to our, so I'm just going to repeat exactly what we just said. Bishlam Matanadidon, according to our Mishnah, Tanam and Yanal Mutit Rav Aisha. We have the number four to exclude the 13 of Rav Aisha. Rav Aisha, Tanam and Yanal Mutit Rav Chia. And Rav Aisha's 13 exclude those of Rav Chia. What are the 24 of Rav Chia to excluding? So Gemara says, Okay, the, the, the 24 of Rav Chia exclude the following two categories. Okay, Meiser basically is where a guy tattles on somebody and it results on him losing his property. Mefagel is a scenario we are is a it's an, an interesting law. You really have to explore it in more detail in Kutchum. The fagal is we are a Kayan basically when he brings a sacrifice for again a Kayan acting for somebody else. So a regular Jew brings a sacrifice. It's the, the actual service is performed by Kayan. And the Kayan has the intention while performing the service to eat it uh, a week later or to eat it outside of Jerusalem, which that and that in, invalidates the sacrifice. Why would he do that? That's a very bizarre set of halachas. Why would Kayan be doing this thing? Okay, regardless if he does it, he has to pay for the value of the sacrifice. So those two are excluded. So the Mars says, Velisni, why aren't why are they excluded? Why aren't they included? Bishlema Mifagal according. I understand Pigal Bikachum like a he doesn't want to refer to sacrifices. Ella Moiser, my time a Why is Moiser not included? So the Mars says, Shiny Moiser the Dibura. Dibura like a Meiser, he didn't actually damage. He just tattled. He spoke. And he's not referencing speech. Obviously, there's a, there's a problem with that because two of the things he said are associated with speech. Meiser Shemer is a guy lying about his newly newly married bride, right? Verbally. And Adam Zaymim, false witnesses, also spoke. So Meiser Shemer is speech and it's listed. 
So Gemara says, Dibur de Isbe Maisu. It's speech, but it also requires an action. He had to have married the woman. Va Edim Zayim Dibur de Lasbe Maisu. False testimony is not considered an action. Sigmar says, Uktani and it's listed. Sigmar says, Hasam Avagav de Lasbe Maisu, Rahmana Karia Maisa. Even though there is no action, that's true. But, but the, the Torah calls it an action. The Chsev, the verse states, Vasisim Loi Kashur Zamam Lasis Lachav. Vasisim Loi, due to him. Kasher zamam lasis, like he intended on doing. So we call we call his plans doing, even though actually he only spoke verbally. Okay, Bishleim Otani Dot, according to the the author of our mission, Otani Tana Avais Mechlal told us, in our mission there are, there's a father, right? The father is Shar, but then there are or Bar, let's say a pit, an ox or a pit, but then there is Taldais, right? We said there are children. What are the children? The child of Bar or pit is a dangerous object. Right, it's not a pit, but it's similar. I'm trying to remember what the now I've got. Oh yeah. yeah. Now, the, what's the child? The, Karen, let's say, for example, intentional damage. Right. What's the child of intentional damage? Intentional damage is usually done with the horn. But what's the child of that? Child is that where the animal bit, like a horse bites. You know, with the intention of inflicting harm, not with the intention of eating. Okay, so that makes sense why we call it Ovis. El Ravchil or Baishia, but according to Ravchil and Ravishia, Ovis Mikhail de Katoldis to the same Mainil. What exactly are the children of all these categories? That hint there are no children. Sigmar says, Amr Bafu, Rabu says, Kulan ka Ovis Lashalam Mimetev. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The, 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 the Gemara says maybe there are so maybe there are children. Some of these obviously, you know, the four of the Mishnah are, are, are gonna have children. But um, with what regard do we call them all Avais? Why are they all why are they all called Avais? All the children are exactly like the fathers. Lashalom he made it to pay the best value property. And what's the source of this? My time Asya Tachas Nasina Ishalom Kesef. Okay. Uh, we don't have enough time to go through it, but I'd highly recommend if you look in the art scroll, basically, Metav. May, the, the payment of Metav is brought with using the words um, Yishalem, pay. And basically every single category of Hezek has one of these four words. Tachas, Nesina, Yishalem, Kesef. Either the word Tachas or the word Yishalem, Nesina or the word Yishalem or Kesef. And therefore they all compare to each other and they all pay Metav. If you have time, I highly recommend going through either Rashi, that would be Rashi and Tachas and Sina, large Rashi toward the bottom of the page, or to look at the art scroll to go through each, every single one. Okay. Next, Gemara. Loi HaRei HaShor Kareh HaMatha. The Mishnah says, Shor, an, an axe, is different, let's say, than a person that does damage. We'll go according, according to Rav. My Kamar, what does the Mishnah mean to say? Amar, it's the Mishnah, the Rav, the Hachi Kamar. In other words, the mission is trying to say as follows. Why do I have four of his Zikin? Why can't the Torah just say one of them? And I'd learn the others from it. And let me learn one from the other. Then it says, You can't learn from one from another. For example, you can't learn Adam from Shur. Right? Because Adam, because Shar is more severe, Shar pays Kaifer. Adam doesn't pay Kaifer. So maybe you don't you, you wouldn't know that Adam Hamazik, Adam Hamazik has to pay. You can't learn Shar from Adam because Adam Hamazik pays makes five payments. Okay. Veloy Zev is Ashiash Birochai. My come, what does Mishra mean to say? Umr of Mishar Shmidra of Hokikama. This is what Mishra means to say. Lichter Rahmana Tarti. The taste of Idah Minayo. Okay, so let the Mishnah is saying, let's write two of them. Let's write, for example, um, let's write Shor and Odom, an ox and a person, and let's learn a Shafire from those two. You can't learn a you can't learn a from a person who does damage or Shor or an ox that does damage. Why not? Because those two are alive, whereas Aish is not alive. Okay, so Omar Rava. Rava points out an interesting feature. Okay, um, this is, I guess, one of the more difficult parts. I think what we'll do here is, 
I'll explain it very briefly, and then if we have time, we'll get back to it. Rav points it as follows: The cool kishod is bar ve'nayu as yekul b'matzad lebar mi karen. If you have bar, pit, and any other of the four of us in the other two are learned from it. If the Torah would have written bar and any of the other of us, I would know that the other two are uh, uh, you're obligated. You, you have to pay. The truth of the matter is, you don't really gain that much by the Torah did not have to write all the of us in if it would have written Burr in any other category, I would know everything. With the exception of Karen, of intentional damage. Karen has a unique feature that, that an animal is not moored. It's not habituated to do damage until it damages three times. Okay, now, if you look at the long Rashi here on the side of the page, I presume Arts will probably bring it down, uh, you will see that Rashi explains every single combination of how you would learn all of the Nazikan from Burr, a pit, and another category. Now, unfortunately, I when I looked through a bunch of sources yesterday and spent about 15 minutes looking for a chart online, and I could not find a chart to, to explain this. A chart would be very, very helpful. My usual source is Dafakhain, for some reason, did not have a chart of this. Nor did they have a chart in Tachas and Sini, Tachas and Sini, Shalom Tesef, which I would have sent out had I been able to find one, but I could not find one. Okay, but uh, highly recommend either going through Rashi or looking at the R scroll. I, I don't think we'll have time to get back to it. To go th- to itemize which which two bar and which other one you you'd be able to learn every other one from it. Okay, there there is a chart on the the end of five A. Oh, in the R scroll, there's a, there's a little bit of a chart Probably showing the, the father and then the phrases that. Associated with it and where it's from in the Torah. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's very good. Yeah, so the chart in five A is very good for Tachas Nasini Yishalom Kesef. In other words, the the source of how how every single category of Nizikin has an associated verse that either is, uses the word Tachas or the word Nasina or the word Yishalom or the word Kesef, and how they're learned from each other along with that long footnote there, which is again worthwhile to see. Okay. But uh, we're short on time, so I can't go through each one of these. But uh, let's continue. According to the opinion that says that Karen is more severe because it has intention to damage, I feel Karen Karen could also be learned from Burr and any other of the other Sezikin. One other one. Okay. So then why does the Torah write all four if they can be learned from each other? Slumara says the Hilchasayam for the general principles. This is very important to remember. Karen, the what's the what's the key idea of Karen? The key idea of intentional damage, typically done with the horn. Uh, Gorin with the horn. Lachalak bain etama lumuedas to differentiate between a tama, an animal that has not been habituated to in, deliberately inflict damage, lumuedas to an animal that that has been habituated. An animal that ha, that has not been habituated only pays half damages. And is limited by migufai. It's the maximum payment is the is is the value of the aggressor animal. Shein viragel, casual damage or pleasurable damage, the patron b'shusarabim to exempt them in the public domain. They are exempt from the public domain. I mean, obviously, you can understand that, that that is pretty understandable, because these things are sort of natural and obvious, and people who are in the public domain should be careful. Animals have a right to be there as well. Bar a pit, lifter by a Burr has, like we said, Burr has some very interesting exceptions. One of them is that a burr is exempt from, from damages re- pertaining to vessels. If a vessel falls into a, to a pit and breaks, you, you, let's say you have an animal carrying vessels, you pay for the animal, not for the vessels. Obviously, if you have a vessel that, that uh, you know, goes, goes by itself into the pit, who knows what's underneath that thing. Okay. Um... Uh, according to Rabbi Yehuda, that you are liable for damage of vessels, it exempts a person. A person who falls into a pit is considered negligent. The owner of the pit is not obligated to pay. And that's because a person you should be able to, uh, you know, he's a little bit better than a rumba, he should be able to protect where the uh, steps are, where the hole is, and not walk into it. Okay. Adam Why does the Torah say that a, a person, you're chayef for man? A man who damages for all for the additional four payments, uh, tsar, reaper, shavas, and baishas. 
Aish, a fire, lifter by a toman. Another unique feature to a fire. A fire is if you you are responsible for lighting a fire, you're only responsible for the damage of things that were visible. If there was a pile and underneath the pile was uh, you know, I don't know, something something valuable. You know, there was a book, a book underneath, computer bag, and a, underneath a pile of clothing. And uh you lit a fire and burnt everything down. You're you're liable for the clothing, the pile, but you're not liable for for, for what was underneath the pile. What's hidden, you're exempt for. It's another discussion. Well, we'll get we'll get to it. According to Rabbi Yehuda, that says that you would be liable even on that which is hidden. What is why exactly does the Torah need to tell me that you are chayev on esh on on your on your fire? The Gemara says, "La suye lichicha nirei v'sichsicha avonov." Basically, an ash would be liable for damage, even things that weren't really destroyed. Um, if uh, basically the stones were burnt, they were scorched. Obviously, you can't, you know, not not too easy for a fire to actually burn a stone, but they're scorched, or the um, the fire caused damage to the field. In other words, the field is sort of intact, but it was plowed, and now it's not; it's, it won't be fertile. Fire would basically destroy the top, the top la- layer of the soil. So you're chay, you're chay for that, even though you might say that that's not something the fire actually consumes. It's not; it's not; the, it's not a direct part of your your uh, your fire. It's an indirect part of the fire. Terra still says you are liable. Okay, we'll stop here. Okay.